This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Today I'm making these little cinnamon leaf cookies and I got the idea from one of my viewers, Laura, who happens to live in Spain. Well, she sent me the idea a couple of months ago and I thought they would be darling cut into these little fall leaf shapes. Now, if you'd like to follow along with the recipe while I bake them, get your smartphone and scan the QR code here on the screen and the recipe will pop right up. Now before we get started baking today, I wanted to show you a new thing I have in the kitchen. Underneath this cabinet here is my iPad. And what's interesting about that is the mount that it's on. Belkin makes this mount, they call it their kitchen cabinet mount, and they graciously sent me one to try out in the kitchen. Now the thing that's really neat about this is, you know what iPads are used for, both reading and also for video. And so if you're a person that that likes to watch my videos and we kind of cook together in the kitchen, one of these mounts might be really, really fun for you to have. Now what I've done is I've taken my recipe and I've loaded it up here on my PDF. I can actually scroll through the pages, which is nice. And if I wanna make the type a little bit bigger, I can just pinch it like this and here it is. Now the way the mount works is you just slip it in on a shelf like this. You don't bolt it or anything and then you just close your cupboard and it's really nice and sturdy. Now if you'd like to find out more about the mount you can just visit Belkin's website. So let's get started baking. In a medium sized bowl I'm going to get my dry ingredients together. So I have my flour out. I'm going to lighten it up and I'll measure two and a half cups of flour and put that in my bowl. Add two tablespoons of cinnamon, a tablespoon of baking powder, and with my little whisk, I'll whisk these together. Now this is one of those Ask Cindy questions that I get many times, is why I don't sift my flour. Well, I find I don't have to if I use this whisk method. Many times, um, I think in the old days, people sifted their flour because it was very lumpy, and today's flour is so nice and smooth, it never lumps up in the container. So I don't really feel that I need to go through that that extra step and to be honest with you I find sifters are really difficult to clean so if you just take a moment and use your little whisk and whisk everything together I think it works out just fine now set the dry ingredients aside and then I'll get a large bowl out and to that I'll add a half a cup of butter that I've melted three quarters of a cup of sugar and then one egg I'm also going to add two tablespoons of milk and I'll really mix that up well. I wanna make sure that that sugar starts to dissolve in the liquid. Now I'll take all of my dry ingredients and put that in my bowl and mix that up really well. Now you could certainly use a uh, mixer to put this together. I just didn't feel like getting it out today. And because the butter is melted, you can just work it in with a spatula. And now I have my big board out. I'm going to dust it with flour. Then I'm going to take just half of the dough, about a handful, bring it together in my hands like this. I'll set this off to the side. I'll dust my rolling pin and I'm going to begin to roll this out. Now make sure that your dough can always move easily on your board. That's why I kind of keep moving it around like this. If the dough does get stuck, it makes it hard to get the cookies back off the board and onto your baking sheet. I'm gonna roll this out to about an eighth of an inch, so fairly thin. I've got my baking sheet with a piece of parchment here at the side, and then I have some of these great little leaf cookie cutters. So see if you can get your hands on some of those. And then I always wanna make sure to run the cutter through some flour. And as I cut the cookies, I'll put them out on my sheet. 
Now I have my first sheet of cookies ready to go in the oven and I've preheated it to 350 degrees and these are going to bake for about 15 minutes. Now while this first batch of cookies is in the oven, I'm going to show you a couple of different toppings that you can put on the cookies. Laura mentioned that she likes to do a powdered sugar and cinnamon topping, so let me show you that one first. For the spiced sugar, in just a small bowl, I have a half a cup of powdered sugar and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And again, with my small whisk, I'll whisk that together really well. And you'll see that that bit of cinnamon sort of turns the powdered sugar just the very lightest color of brown. And when we go to use this, I'll get one of my little strainers out and I'll put a spoonful in and then we'll just tap that onto the cookies. And then the next thing I thought might be fun is to put a little cinnamon glaze on the cookie. So let me show you how I make that. In another small bowl, I'll put in a cup of powdered sugar a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'll whisk that together. Then to that I'll add two tablespoons of milk, a tablespoon of melted butter, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then again with my whisk I'll whisk that together and whisk it till it's nice and smooth and it should just be this kind of drizzly consistency. Now I'm going to use my whisk to drizzle this, but you could use a fork or a spoon if you'd like. Now you can see they're nice and golden brown. I'm going to slide them right off the baking sheet. And on one row I'll sprinkle a little bit of the uh, spiced sugar. And on another row I'll do a little drizzle of the cinnamon glaze. I'll do a little more sugar on this one here. And these I will just let sit and cool. Well, as you can see, you get lots and lots of cookies if you make them in sort of this two or three bite size, which I have to say is kind of a nice contrast to having giant cookies all the time. And I love the idea of having the choice of either the spiced sugar or the glaze. They're both really, really good. But now time for a taste. These are a nice crunchy little cookie, perfect for the afternoon with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And you'd think that the cinnamon would be really overpowering because of using two tablespoons, but it's not. It's very mild. It's really a delicious little cookie. Thank you, Laura. Now, if you'd like to make these little cinnamon leaf cookies at home, just go to our website and go to the cookie jar show notes and I'll have the recipe there for you. I want to thank Belkin again for letting me use the kitchen cabinet mount for my iPad. I really liked using it today. I hope you'll join us on Facebook. We have a wonderful community there of people from around the world and I put a lot of my funny behind the scenes information and photos up there. You might get a kick out of that. If you do make these little cookies, don't forget to send me a photo so I can send you the cookie badge. And as always, if you have any questions or ideas for me, please send me an email. I'll see you next time.